Okay, guys. See, see if everybody can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Check. Should be able to uh, hear me just fine. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Sorry, guys. The first time with uh, OBS, and it's uh, it's not that simple as I thought it would be. But uh, let's see. Okay. 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 Let me go to OBS here. Okay, and I should be uh, perfect, perfectly in focus. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining this live. Uh, I thought it was kind of fun to do a, a prediction, camera prediction kind of stuff. I think it would be pretty, pretty nice to do because there's nothing really happening um, since quite a bit. So I figure let's do a live and see what happened. Um, I already have some question right here in the chat. And I also have... Uh, and I also have some questions. Uh, I also have some questions. Uh, I also have some questions. Oops, sorry. Uh, Let's try to move. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. 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 Yes, if you call me, I will definitely do it. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to start answering uh, some question in the from the from this chat and also I'm going to move on to the question that I that I had where I said um, what is your camera prediction for 2022 because I think it's going to be quite fun. Ciao Mattia, sono Matteo. Ma ciao Enrico. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna have a lot to talk about this camera box, about this monitor, about red cameras, about all this kind of stuff. I figure I will do a live because it's more entertaining and, and way less boring than just sitting down and uh, facing a camera and, uh, and, and, and try to explain things. I figure live is gonna be much, much better. And uh, guys, I don't, I don't have any intel, any any, you know, internal news from Blackmagic. It's just speculation at this point, and I'm just guessing what is gonna happen. To be honest, I'm quite confused by what Blackmagic is doing, but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best and see what we can do. So let's see if everybody connects. And once it's, we're all good, we can start. I'm having some really weird problem with my um, mouse on the MacBook. It, it keeps disappearing for some reason. I don't know why, but okay. We can start probably. All right, guys. So let's break some highs here. First of all, uh, if you didn't really um, heard about it, but uh, my live online course is still going on. We did lesson number one, which is great. Everybody was happy. And now we're going to move to number two, three, and four. Cinematography, gear, and, uh, and other cool stuff, which is post-production and Da Vinci. So if you, if you couldn't sign up, if you didn't sign up yet, you can still do it again with Battery 10 at checkout. I'm going to leave some uh, links in the description. But I will move on now, and uh, hopefully we're going to see you at the course. But let's answer some questions. Just breathe. I hope Blackmagic developer Red Komodo style camera body. I wouldn't mind if the use of Blackmagic 6K sensor for cost saving and R on R&D. Okay, this is a very nice question at, for studying because I, I really want to answer this. Because uh, apparently everybody's going crazy for this cube camera factor. Uh, and my question is, why? Just to give you a reference, because I know a lot of people are going to say, yeah, but Alexa Mini. Alexa Mini was born to be used on a gimbal and to be used on, on drones. It was never meant to be used as a, as a full cinema camera. I use the Mini quite a lot, and it is a pain in the butt in terms of rigging, because you have a little cube, which, you know, it's 
it's nice. By the time you rig it up to make it balance, except for the cost of rigging it up, which is insane, but it's also really hard to find a good balance. And the reason is it's a cube. And because it's a cube, it's going to be extremely hard to balance because you're going to have maybe a long cinema lens in front of it, a little V-man battery on the back. So it, it, I don't get all this cube form factor thing. Like, and I'm going to keep, I'm going to get my Ursa Mini now. Like, cinema, cinema camera were born like this, okay? This is a cinema camera because you can put it on the shoulder, you know, and you can move it up and down. And uh, once you have a lens here and the battery in the back is going to be extremely, extremely balanced. So the other cool thing about this form factor is that you have a monitor, a display integrated. And the viewfinder, of course, but you know, sometimes I'm doing low angles, so I need a display. I don't need to mount a giant seven inches screen on it. I can just look into my viewfinder and then I can look at this little monitor and I'll be fine. So this is the main uh, thing that I wanted to touch base because I don't get all this, this red. This is a red hype, I call it, because everybody's posting the photo of their cube camera and, uh, and I don't get it. I mean, if there, if there is a reason why you want a cube, I would say, okay, yeah, makes sense. Maybe you're using it on a gimbal or on a drone, that's fine. But having a camera that is a cube and sacrificing the beautiful pocket 6K five inches monitor, I think it's, it, it's, it's quite, quite a disappointing in my opinion. So if Blackmagic will ever go that route, I'm not gonna be happy. And, and the main reason is to be honest is that the pocket 6K is gonna lose the pocket essence. So the pocket essence was, I have this camera in my hand with a display on it. And even if the battery is crap, and even if whatever negative you can find, you can still take it out of your backpack and film some cool stuff around wherever you are around the world without having to worry about building a monitor on it and, and, and doing, you know, like crazy VMAN battery stuff. So that is the essence, in my opinion, of the Pocket 6K. And I really hoping it's gonna stay like that because it's a camera that, in my, in my opinion, it, it was born like that. And it, and it should be like that, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty straight. And I, I, I mean, I'm a big, big, big fan of the Pocket Factor. Now, if you want a real cinema camera, you can just move to the Ursa Mini and you're gonna have a real cinema camera. So to answer the question, hopefully not, they're not gonna do it, but let's see. Drake, since B-Raw is open source, do you think we could see other camera brands implementing it into the code? I think we've already seen it because uh, Panasonic, I think they did it. So yeah, for sure. Um, okay, let's move on here. A lot of questions, wow, holy crap. That's funny. They call me Mattia, but I'm Matteo. Okay, uh, Aaron Smith, I hope the new camera is box style, screen on the side, not back. IO option, all located the rear, and that is truly a box style. No slope, back like the Ursa. Locking EF, uh, yeah, okay. I, I, I only agree with the locking EFR. Uh, EEF or RF, RF mount, whatever it is. But um, on the locking thing, I agree, because my Leica sometimes they, they wiggle a bit on the pocket and the Ursa. So it'd be nice to have a, to have a locking, locking system. Again, I'm super happy with the Ursa. Put it on the shoulder, I do handle. I hate cube, I hate boxes. I don't want that. So hopefully they're not gonna go that route. Um, Michael, where do you go to find inspiration when you feel stuck artistically? Well, this is a good question. Now I'm pretty stuck. I'm trying to think in about a, a tribute to Rolex, something that I can shoot like a, like a quick commercial, quick, uh, quick spec hat that I can shoot for, for this Mariner with a guy in the ocean with his uh, um, scuba dive gear on, something like that. I, 
I just, it's hard, man. And um, I think traveling is what makes me more renew my, my, my enthusiasm in, in, in shooting. Because being stuck in Florida for a while now, I'm like, eh, whatever. So now the fact that I'm moving to Portugal is going to give me a lot of uh, energy, a lot of inspiration, a lot of motivation. I expect a ton of, of little travel film here and there in Europe, camera test in Lisbon. I, I, I'm really in touch with the guys there. I want to find an agency to work all the time with models and stuff. So it's going to be it's going to be nice. Uh, for me, relocating is, is a big motivation. And it's a big thing that, I, that I'm looking for. Um, Okay, Gregory, do you think that we will get a box tie cinema camera? I hope not. I seriously hope not. I don't like it. Global Shutter in the Pocket 6K in 2022. I have to be honest, even here, I was never uh, super concerned with Global Shutter. Maybe if you do sports, maybe if you do a lot of like the only the only way sometimes I see this, this rolling shutter thing is when YouTubers do tests and they move the camera like this, which never really happened in real life. So global shutter for me was never a big deal. The Ursa is pretty much a global shutter because he has zero rolling shutter in 8K. So one of my my guess is that they might use the Ursa 12K sensor. Um, even if we have to see how they're going to do with the dual ISO versus one ISO, put it in the pocket and limit it, limit it to 8K. That was, um, you know, that was one of my, my theory, but we'll see. Is BN coming out with a new micro camera? I don't know. That, that would be interesting. I feel they kind of left that project a while ago, but uh, I don't know what they're working on. I know there's the cheap, cheap shortage and the world is a mess right now. So I don't know what's gonna happen if they're gonna able to deliver. Their cameras, they're all in stock from the Pocket 6K, 6K Pro, Ursa Mini 12K. The only one that is not in stock is the G2, but simply because I think they're gonna stop producing it eventually. And so like B&H and the RAM are just running out of stock. So that, that's, I think, my theory. Um, how old are you? What is your favorite movie? I'm 30. How old am I? I'm 33. Favorite movie this is way too many. Uh, what about the new R5C? I didn't follow that close, so I don't know. I don't know much about Canon cameras. Um, they're a little bit too, too digital for me. Uh, what do you like, warm or cold colors? Quintessent depends, depends from the project, depends what I'm doing, but uh, I'm more on the warm side, even though at night, maybe cold are better. Canon C70 R5, I don't know, I don't know guys. I, I, I know about Sony quite a bit, I know about Ari a bit, uh, quite a lot. I know about Red, I know about Blackmagic. Canon is, uh, I, I, I rarely use Canon, so I don't, I don't really know. Um, oh, one thing I can say about Canon, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I use it for a job um, a couple of weeks ago. The menu is just a nightmare. I thought Sony had a really bad menu. Canon has an even worse menu. And it's so hard to use, coming from a Blackmagic or an Aria Alexa, or a Red for that matter, that I don't know how people can manage to use a Canon camera. I, I have no clue. Blackmagic is gonna go mirrorless. I don't know. Well, technically the Pocket 6K is a mirrorless. So um, yeah, they already did that, I think. Okay, a lot of questions. Do you see a world where larger production are willing to use Blackmagic cameras, their main cameras, rather than Ari? I'm already seeing it. In LA, most of the people that I know, they use Ari and they use uh, Blackmagic as a B-cam. They're definitely not gonna use a RAD as a B-cam to an Ari. If you are an Ari, you want a B-cam that is not an Ari, you're gonna use the Blackmagic camera. So I'm already seeing that. Great, Matteo, hello, hello guys. Hi everybody, thanks for connecting. We're 100 people, love you guys. Red Ipe, Red, okay. You can say whatever you want about Red. They're amazingly good at marketing. They're amazingly good at, at, at creating Ipe. Now, are they good camera? Of course, they're pretty good camera. Are they worth what they cost? No, period, period. 
you cannot justify that cost. And I think a lot of people, because I'm chatting with a lot of people recently, and not a lot of people know about that red scandal that came out. There's two big episodes that made me kind of mad with, with red cameras and why it never even goes. Like, I, can I afford the red camera? Yes, I can afford it. I would never buy it, ever. But two episodes we read that kind of pissed me off a little bit. The first one was when they 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 charge you $3,000 for an SSD that they claim is made in California and is a red proprietary SSD when technically is a Chinese SSD that they sell as a red SSD for that much money. And that got a lot of red fanboy piece as well. Uh, and I think they lost quite a bit of market there. The other, the other thing that I didn't really like what they did is with the hydrogen phone. So basically when they released the hydrogen phone, they started charging people that pre-order it and basically they use those pre-order as a crowdfunding to pay for a project that was never being released. And like a 3D display, a 3D screen on an iPhone. I, and guys, I used, I, I, I saw with my eyes that display. I tried with my hands. I had the hydrogen in my hand. And guys, that thing was a, it looked like a cheap Chinese phone with a broken screen. And the camera, I think it was at the level of an iPhone 4. It was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Uh, the idea was cool. Sure. At the end of the day, it was an actual scam. It was an actual scam. So that's my other big problem with Red. The other thing that I, I don't know how I feel about it. I feel pretty bad. And that's why I don't like Red. The thing that they patent raw, like you can't do raw because that's because Red somehow invented raw, which I don't really know. So there's a couple of episodes we read that I'm, you, you know, and, and then these on top of the fact that, you know, they, I use red so many times and I always had problem. I never had one single issue with the pocket. I always had problem with the red. Sometimes I put that red magnet. Well, just to turn it on, it takes a minute. Then you have to do the, the, the black shade calibration. And then I put the red mag in there. It doesn't recognize it. Every time you take it out after you shoot, your, your heartbeat is like start racing because you don't know what error is going to give you. It's just like an old computer that, I, that I'm not very confident using. And, and, and I don't know. And it costs too much money, guys. It's like, again, invest in lenses, not in, not in camera. That's my, that's my point. Harold Smith, cubes provide a space to customize and distribute weight and form. I love my Black Magic 6K, but it's annoying to put on my RS2. Yeah, but, but see, this is the argument that I was having before. Cubes are good for gimbals and drones, but if, if you want a real cinema camera, just get an Ursa. We're talking about six grand, guys. It's like, it's not that much. And I think the Pocket 6K should be, should stay like a Pocket 6K because that's a camera that I want to bring in my backpack. I want to take it out and I will start shooting with my Sony um, Canon batteries, internal batteries, everywhere I go. This how the pocket was um, created, and that's why I think it should stay like that. If you want a cinema camera, you can go with an Ursa, or you know, you can get a, I don't know, a Z Cam for your gimbal stuff. I think they can match pretty well. But uh, I wouldn't. Let's say if if Black Magic want to add a little cube and call it Micro Two. Black Magic Micro, second generation, third generation, whatever, that's fine. But I would never replace the Pocket 6K. That's what I, the form factor at least. Unless they can make it even smaller, kind of like the original Pocket, that would be great. Uh, okay, you lost the Pocket aspect after the original Pocket camera. Yeah, you can put it in your pocket, but I never put my original Pocket in my pocket either. So. I can still put it in my backpack and I can take it out and start shooting because I have a monitor on it and internal batteries. I don't have to rig it up. So that was it, the point. Guys, I'm not saying that the Pocket 6K is pocket. I'm saying that the Pocket 6K, it, like a reflex, like a 5D Mark II, you can take it out of your bag and start shooting. I'm not saying that, <laughs> that you can put your Pocket 6K in your pocket. I'm saying you can put in your bag, your backpack, whatever, you take it out, you don't have to rig it up, you put one battery in there, especially with the Pocket 6K Pro, you have internal ND and you have your, your, your tilt, you can tilt your monitor and you can do everything you want by simple putting a battery and a CFAST car in there. You don't need to do anything else. It's not a lot about dimension. This is about, what I'm talking about is about the form factor. 
that I hope it stays the same. Uh, global Shutter. I don't know why people are obsessed with Global Shutter, to be honest. I don't see this. I mean, it, I don't know. I shot so many cool things with my Pocket 6K. And the last concern that I had, it was the Global Shutter. Like, he never bothered me. He never made me think, oh, crap, I wish I had a Global Shutter. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm okay with Global Shutter, but I don't need it. Uh, Mustafa, what would you like to see in a new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera? What I would love to see is the exact same ND of the Ursa. Even if they want to make me pay five grand for the pocket, I'm, I'm okay with that. But what I would do, I will do it more square. If we want to talk about design, I would love to have something more like a... Like a Leica, like the, my Q2, something more square. I don't like the design. It's not nice, to be honest. Um, I would love to have a, a real S35 sensor. So 1.3 crop. That would be amazing. Uh, not a fan of the full frame. And I'm going to talk about this in a little while. Probably going to answer some question. But S35, a real S35, 1.3, like the Ursa. Um, better internal ND and... Uh, and that's it. And that's it. A little better design. So a little better design, uh, better internal ND, and uh, real S35 sensor. Okay. Do you think it will keep MFT in the next camera generation? You, f you mean, Colin, if they're going to keep releasing an MFT camera? I don't know. I don't know. They could. I don't know what, what the market, what the trend is right now. I I don't know because it's like, um, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I'm not completely sure what they're going to do with the MFT. I don't know if there's requests there. I think EF is quite of a safe thing to go. Um, I would probably, I would probably skip an MFT right now. I would focus on PL and, and EF probably. <laughs> Okay. Gregory, I think most people want the cube form factor to replace the pocket for K6K Pro, not the Ursa Mini. No, 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 but that... Okay. Okay. Uh, hopefully, this question was probably before. My, my point is, I still want the pocket 6K body. Because the pocket 6K body, I can take it out of my bag and start filming. If they put it on the cube with no monitor, that needs batteries and stuff like that. What I'm gonna do? <clears throat> but I think the point, my point, is pretty clear now. I love my pocket 6K, and I would love to get my hands on the Ursa 12K. The Ursa 12K, guys, and um, let me let me say this straight. And people are gonna be you crazy. You're 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 you're, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. Let's get this straight. Since I got the 12K, I never rented an RE anymore. I don't need and Ari Lakes anymore. Whatever magic Ari was giving me when I was shooting and I was like, oh my gosh, you can see that's an Ari. I get the exact same feeling with the Ursa 12K. If you didn't have one, if you don't have one, if you didn't try one yet, rent one with a good lens, go out and shoot, you're gonna be blown away. And again, a lot of people think I'm crazy. What can I say? Uh, what can I say? Uh, will you be attending now? No, guys, I'm, I'm moving to Portugal, so I'm not going to be back in the U.S. For, for a while. Um, next question. I want a sphere camera. That'd be great. What do you think of red, red codec versus B-RAW? It kind of sucks. That red as the patent on true raw video. Well, that's that's that. This is another. <sighs> First of all, from what I learned, the Komodo doesn't use the same compression, real raw compression that other reds use. It's a very little detail, detail in a white paper, I believe, but it's not the same. I might be wrong, but this is what I learned for now. Second, B raw is raw. Be raw is raw, and uh, I and I love it. I love it because I cannot and I, 
guys, why do you think I shoot eight by one and not three by one? Because I don't need it. Now, do you need real, real, real raw? Which I don't even know what it means. Like, I think B raw is, is raw. I mean, isn't it? It should be raw. Um, I love it. I love B raw. It's easy. I can edit 12K footage in 8K timeline on my MacBook while I'm on a plane. Like, what else can I ask for? Like, I'm glad I have B raw and not red, red coded. Okay. The Blackmagic Origin was the only pocket camera. Yeah, but here again, guys, we're not talking about sizes. We're talking about form factor. A camera with a display in the back that, uh, that takes internal batteries. Da -da 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 -da. Wait, are you guys telling me that you put your, your original pocket in your pocket? Because I'm not going to buy that. Okay. <laughs> If, we're not, if you were not a Blackmagic user, what camera would you film in? Um, let's say Blackmagic is not in, on the market right now. I would probably... That's a good question. I would probably get a... I don't know. I'm lost. I don't like any of the other cameras, so I don't know. I don't know. That's a really good question, but I have to think about it and get back to you because I have no clue what I'm going to use because I'm not a fan of any other cameras, to be honest, So except Ari. But um, and, I, and I, again, you can buy an Alexa Classic with six grand. Would I ever want to use an, an Alexa Classic? Hell no. Absolutely no. So I would never do that. Uh, Portugal, Portugal, Portugal. Black Magic was the only pocket camera. Okay, where am I? If you were not, but was it? Okay. Ooh, shit. Okay, I lost. Okay, sorry guys, so many questions. Oof, where was, where was I? Okay, here. BMD, Blackmagic releasing a pocket full frame, Ursa full frame is what we all want. Now, I'm gonna use this question to jump on another argument that I have about full frame. Why people are so obsessed with full frame? It's a very simple argument. Cinema survived for hundreds of years with S35. All the vintage cinema laser was S35. Why full frame is so important? Is it gonna make your image better? No. Is it gonna help you tell a story better? Not really. Like, I use my Lycar set on the Sony A7S III full frame and I didn't like the look. Like the 19 was all like weird, it was vignetting. Like S35, which means real S35, not the pocket S35, Ursa S35 is 1.3 crop. That is the best aspect ratio you can possibly have for, for a cinema camera. And, uh, and it was always like this. So I, I don't know. To be honest, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a fan of full frame. I mean, I get it. I get it. Um, it's cool. It's cool. You can blur the background. Like, even there. And, and I, I'm going to give you a very, very quick example here, guys. So stay with me. I'll give you a, a practic, practical example. I really love how my Leica 35mm look at F2. Okay, so I want to shoot at F2. Not because I want to shoot... Not just because I want to have a blur background, I want to shoot at f2 because the lens is softer, I have a little bit of defects. It gives me those characteristics that are only present if I shoot at f2. Now, I will never be able to shoot f2 on a full frame camera because at that point, where is the contest? Like, What's the context? Like I'm shooting a subject at f2 on a full frame 35 millimeter. What's the point of seeing everything blur in the background? Because this is really what people are looking for, I guess, that blur background. But if I'm shooting a movie and I have a subject in front of a building and I need to know what that building is and I want to shoot at f2, I can't do that because it's going to be all out of focus. So we, with full frame camera, you're going to have to shoot at f4 at least, or 5.6. And at F5.6 and F4, you're not gonna have those characteristics that the lens has at F2. Now, 
I'm absolutely happy with my 1.3 crop factor on the Ursa Mini Pro. I'm shooting wide angle on a, on a 35 mil. It's gonna be, give me a nice depth, but I can still see the background. If I wanna do a close up, I can shoot an F2 and I'm gonna still be able to see the, the background a little bit. So I, I don't get all this full frame trend. My opinion is again, YouTube and, and, and you can still, you know, you might have the argument, well, but Ari is going full frame. And I mean, Ari is adding a full frame camera to their collection. They're not gonna stop S35 camera production. They're actually gonna come out with a new Alexa Mini S35. There's a reason if they do that. So I think all these, this trend about uh, full frame camera box is just a, a talk. I mean, it's not like, it's, it's, your image is not gonna be any better if it's full frame. It will not. Yeah, you're gonna have maybe a little bit better low light performance. Okay, but in terms of image quality, dynamic range, it's it's gonna be the same, guys. So don't get sucked into this full frame thing because you don't really need it. So if they're going only full frame, I would be honestly pissed because I mean, what am I gonna do with my Leica R collection? I don't know. Um, just to clear a point on the on the full frame, so I got rid of those two things that I always thought about. It. Opinion on the Sigma FP? I never tried it. I talked to people that had it before. I know that they they improved it with the with the software update, but originally it was crap. So I don't I don't know because I never I never really used it. Uh, what do you think about 12K for commercial project? Perfect, absolutely perfect. What were you doing five years ago? I have no clue. Five years ago, I moved to US six years ago. So five years ago, I was, I guess, in in Utah working full time for a, for a company as a filmmaker, I guess. An upgrade for the Pocket 4K with MFT mount? Possible, possible. I know people love MFT because they can adapt the vintage lenses pretty easily. I don't know, we'll see. Blackmagic mirrorless, I don't, I don't know. I think the pocket is a, is a mirrorless, right? I didn't get Blackmagic 12K because it was very suspicious to me when they dropped the price. I think they're soon coming with the... No, Tony, I think what they did is basically they, they were having probably hard time sourcing the, their own sensor, making their own sensor. And once the production got to a, a regime, two things. One, they were having hard time sourcing, making the sensor. So they have to keep the price a little bit higher. Second, I think they realized that Blackmagic user, they're not willing to spend 10 grand on a camera. There are more people that are gonna buy a two to six, $7,000 camera. I think 10 was a bit too much. Now, how did they, how, how can they sell this camera? 12K 75P, 8K 120P, 12K, 8K, 4K, incredible internal ND, <clears throat> all the ports that you might need. Uh, how can they sell this for six grand? I don't know. That is a question, that, that's an answer that I, a question that I can't answer. So I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, but it's great. I love them. In Falcon, did the winder, winder, solider, they use, in Falcon at the end, the winder. Oh, they use a pocket 6K, I guess, on the movie, okay. <clears throat> Have you ever had issue with Moir? This is a question that I got asked a lot. Yes, I did have issue with Moir with the original pocket 6K. After that, never had an issue. What is some ma micro coming soon? That's interesting. What's an Ursa micro could look like? That'd be interesting. I'd be interesting to see that. And there was that micro, that'd be great. Tony, camera my dreams would be Black Magic 4444, autofocus, global shutter, 8K sensor, metal body. I don't know, man. I, I'm seriously hoping they will never put autofocus on a cinema camera because uh, I, I can't stand that. Uh, for autofocus possibility are near to zero. Um, for four, 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 I guess they can't really do it on the, on the Ursa mini 
12K because they can't do the 12K, 8K, 4K, no crop just because they use b I think. So <clears throat> I'm not sure. But, you know, Black Magic, you don't hear anything that out of nowhere they might introduce the best camera ever, as they always did. So we'll see. I think February something has to happen, right? February, March, isn't about this time that they release the, the Pocket 6K Pro? They should do it. Pocket 6K with 15 stops. Yeah, I think 13, 15 doesn't really make too much of a difference. I mean, I compare my Ursa with the Pocket and they're pretty much the same, so. Don't get red spaded pattern on raw video footage. But imagine raw, be raw would be true raw. I still don't understand why it's not true raw. I, I, I don't get it. I think it is true raw, but we'll see. Let's see here. What are your thoughts about the newer Sony stuff? Um, I tried the S7S3, the FX3, I, 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 I tried it too. Uh, I love the body. Okay, if they can put the pocket 6K sensor and everything Blackmagic has into a even bigger FX3 body, I would be super happy. Because I really like all that metal thing kind of body, pretty, pretty cool. Um, do you think uh, Sony comes close? No, okay, and then, of course, the downside of that FX3, S7S3, doesn't matter what I do in post, doesn't matter if I use a Leica, it still has that digital look. I don't know if it's the sharpening, I don't know if it's the codec, I don't know. But I can tell right away it's a Sony camera. I don't know. I think the, the, the look and the and the the image, the, the, the quality of the image that Blackmagic give us give you is unique. Unique. And I honestly prefer it to even to red. Because I shoot with red all the time. I like black magic color signs much better than, than red. So the only thing I guess maybe equal or superior to black magic in my opinion is the ari and something about the sony venice but um you know we're talking about a sixty thousand dollar camera what the, what the heck are we talking about here so sony could could do something but they don't because Sony is a big, huge corporation that just need to upsell you on other models. If they put everything in such a small body like an S7S3, people are not going to buy bigger cinema camera or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. But hopefully, hopefully they're gonna, they're gonna, we're going to see something something great. Did you realize, guys, how long did it take to Sony to come up with a 422 codec? Forever. Panasonic is the same. How long did it take them to come out with a... Or maybe it was 422-24, but 420-60p. Like, why? Because they want to... Because they want to sell you other cameras. That's the thing. Blackmagic, somehow, they don't care. They do not care. It's insane. Captain Shades Production. Do you think it's possible to work as a DP and professional photojournalist at the same time? Yeah, why not? It depends on how busy you are as a photojournalist, but everything's possible, for sure. Marco Martins, I'm in Lisbon, ready to receive you. Yes, I'm going to be in Lisbon probably second week of March. I'm going to fly to Italy March 1st, um, pack my stuff and move to Lisbon. Hey, Matteo, Vino, Vincelli. You say you're like a set. What other lens sets you love to shoot? And what set would you like to use for a project in the future? I really, really like, guys, and I keep saying this all the time, the Nikkor... AIS. They are phenomenal. In my opinion, much better than a Canon FD2. If you have the chance, and, and I don't know why people are not paying attention to those lenses, they're insane. They are insane. Nikkor AIS, you can still buy them new, I think, on B&H. They are amazing. And uh, in my latest video, I think I posted some frame about them. I'm going to post some frames about those sneakers on my community tab and you're going to be able to see them. They're amazing. If I wouldn't have the Leica R right now, I wouldn't get a set of Nikkor AIS. Full frame would be great on Blackmagic. Yeah. Eh. As long as I think, I think, okay, L let's be honest. I prefer full frame 
than 1.56 crop. Yes, but I do prefer 1.3 crop than full frame. I said it. We have a red weapon AK work, but we usually just go for a rigged out SH1 because the red is being annoying to use. That's exactly what I said. How do you feel, Director S, about the Ursa Broadcast Z2 being used as a cinema camera? It's actually a really interesting camera that got very, it went way under the radar. Because that camera, the cool thing, you can shoot A265. So it's a cinema camera that you can use for broadcast and it also allows you to record A265. I think it's a pretty amazing camera. The only problem is still the 1.56 crop, which is not ideal because it's on a 35, it's gonna be like a 50, so. Come to Brazil, Leonardo. Uh, one day, one day I will come to Brazil. Um, backpack camera. What's on the Sigma FP? Yeah, I agree, Mike. I think they need to, to like, I, I love this philosophy behind this body, like a, a camera body, like a reflex body, 5D Mark II. I would love to do some more design work, kind of like the FX3 or the Sigma. I totally agree with that. Maybe a little bigger even, but at least it's metal, it's, it's nice to use, it's, I don't know. But I still want to display it in the back. Who's the next? Blackmagic have an RF mount. This RF mount, is it that common, guys? Sorry, I'm a bit... Um, I'm a bit not updated with this. Is the RF mount that what's what's the deal with the RF mount? I guess it's a new Canon mount, but I, I I don't know much about RF mount, and I never seen one uh, on all the set I've been on, so I don't know. Uh, okay. Next question. Cool next, okay. The G2 is a cinema camera. Yes, the G2 is a cinema camera, exactly. Super 35 is the current Was the Is the Super 35 is gonna still be a thing? Even for the defects on the, even for the defects. Yeah, I think, guys, S35 has been around since under a year plus. Of course he will, of course he it will. It's the best. I kind of like that thing. I kind of like that that a little bit of a punch on my lens. Maybe I'm just used to it. I don't know. Why is the Ursa 12K not a Netflix approved camera? These guys is just marketing. Panasonic cut a big check for Netflix. Netflix put, put that camera on the approved camera list. What happened? Panasonic increased sales. As simple as that. There is absolutely no reason why the Ursa or the Pocket, or the original Pocket is not on Netflix. So, Netflix approved camera. Again, my opinion, Panasonic, a good relationship with Netflix. Hey, can you put our camera on your on your thing? A bunch of blogs are gonna do an article about, now the S1H is approved for Netflix, and everybody's gonna be like, oh crap, that means it's a great camera. And I know a lot of you would not gonna think that, but most of the people, majority of the people out there, that's what they think. If they put tomorrow the Komodo as an approved camera or whatever it is, they're gonna be like, oh, see, the Komodo is better than the Pocket because it's an approved camera list for Netflix. Marketing, guys, marketing. Global shutter is great if you want to stabilize in post production. Yeah, I never really use any stabilization in post, and even when I do, I never had a problem, so that's, Think it's not a big deal. Uh oh. Um, shit. Okay, I'm losing. Oh my gosh, so many questions. Oh uh oh. Fuji. Hmm. Not a big fan. Okay. Um, okay. Felipe Vece. Just wish the pocket 6K 4K will be symmetric so you can put it on a gimbal. Yeah, maybe the reason why I love them is because I never used a gimbal before. So that could be it. Um, yeah, Quintessent is right, marketing. 
Um, cinematographer, anamorphic full frame, worth it? Um, sure. I mean, it's gonna look great. You can always crop full frame, but not the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Not too sure. Continuous focus would be a great update, even if it's a focal point, as I say, but without. Yeah, I'm, 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 I don't use gimbal, I don't use autofocus, so I'm, I'm, I don't care about those. Focus XK is great, nice color, good DR. Yeah, you need a Pocket 6K Pro that you're gonna tilt your screen fine. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Fuji, I'm not a fan. Fuji, there's something wrong with their log codec. So when I did the LUTs uh, for the Fuji XT4, XT3, there was something super weird going on with the log especially at night and in weird light situations. So I, I don't know how I feel about Fuji. I'm not, not a fan. I used to put it in a jacket. <laughs> I never did that. Uh, Z9. Yeah, I need, to, I need to put my hands on a, on a Nikon and see with the NRAW how it works. But even when you, when, you, when you Google online on YouTube, there's not a lot of people using those cameras. So I'm, I think Nikon was always about photography and they're having a hard time having people on board for video. Yeah, photographer, exactly. Uh, Philippe Vece, full frame is not great unless you're a photographer. Yeah, so, yes. I do agree full frame is dope for photography. I don't get it for video. I, don't, I mean, I, I get it to a point. I don't get all the, 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 the rumors, the trend about it, I don't know. The Green Knight. Have you ever seen the Green Knights? I was really impressed with the cinematography, especially the use of color and the camera movement. Uh, one of my recent favorite film is, of course, Terence Malik, the last one about the Second World War, about the Nazi. Uh, incredible movie. Was not shot by Lubetsky, and that's why I think he didn't really get any, any, how you call it? He didn't get a lot of talk, you know, because when you when Lubetsky shoot it, everybody's going to talk about it. When there's no Lubetsky in there, but actually his Steadicam operator shot it, and I don't know if you wouldn't tell me that Lubetsky didn't sh if Lube that Lubetsky shot it, I would believe it because it looks like a Lubetsky movie. So um, I love it, but I didn't see the Green Knight. I think. Did you recommend a beginner use Blackmagic 6K? Yes, it's a great camera for beginners. Be actually a box shaped camera. No, they shouldn't. They should not. <laughs> but the difference, you're a DP and many of us are one man band. I sold all my Pocket 6K and got the FX3 and have not looked back. Yeah, I mean, if you if you don't care about the color science, if you don't care about uh, what can you do in post, if you don't care about the workflow, because B-Raw, you know, I can I can play 12K B-Raw in 8K tablet on my MacBook. If you don't care about those things, it's great, you know? So on is great. I just don't like how, how digital it looks. It's uh, for some people it's good. I, I, I think it's, you know, in pocket is just quite unique. Like a R fits full frame. I thought it does, but the 19 is going to still vignetting. Speed booster are cool, but I'm glad that I don't have to deal with them anymore, but they're cool. Scan of C200 getting an update version. I don't know. That camera was pretty successful, I guess. So I'm guessing they will. Even if Canon, I don't know, man. It, Canon is kind of weird. It's kind of weird. They, they charge so much money for this camera when they don't do anything crazy special. They still have that digital vibe. I like Canon better than Sony, but they still have that digital kind of look. And just the menu, even if it was the best camera in the world, I would never get one just for the menu because it's stupid. It is stupid that I, how it's designed. It, it shouldn't be like that. Uh, going back, you're the, you're the seal to return, but Magic Pocket 6K Pro. Will you get one again? Yeah, if they, up the, if they upgrade the ND and they put the same ND of the Ursa in the Pocket 6K, I would definitely get one. But they will never do that unless they're gonna charge you at least three grand for the camera. Uh, the reason why they did this and D on the Pocket 6K Pro is because they charging 2,500 bucks for a camera that shoots 6K 50P, which is nuts. So, 
Whoop. Are you guys still... Am I still connected? Can you guys hear me? I had no data message on it. Yes, okay, cool, cool. Okay, sorry guys, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm catching up the question because there's so many, like almost 200 people. Uh, Nikkor went up 20%. Uh, no, I wanna, I found, okay, great, thank you. No, I wanna just find quality video. But what happened, do you ever read my script? Yes. I want to answer to that. I have the email. I'm planning to read it. The thing is that um, I'm at, so I'm doing the online course. I'm moving to Portugal. I'm selling everything I have in this apartment. I sold pretty much all my gear and I'm having really hard time catching up with, with everything. I have to upload a video week on YouTube. Um, so much stuff to do. I have to figure out how to log into my bank without using the phone. I have to order a USB key. There's so much crap going on right now that, uh, uh, I'm sorry I didn't get back to you, but I'm buried with things to do. And literally, I'm moving in 25 days, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to you for sure. Um, okay. Shit, there's so many questions. Uh, I can't. In a cute body like the Komodo. Okay, let me see if I can catch up very quick. Because a lot of questions have been asked before, so... <clears throat> okay, I think I'm getting there. But imagine if... How does the new firmware software in the Ursa works? I think it's a bit better. I shot a Naya commercial, it was pretty good. I was gonna get rid of the pocket 6K, too much of an asshole. Be sure to hire DPNR. Could be raw. Desire. Could be raw. Be released to a phone. I doubt it. I think I might invest in Blackmagic for, okay, for stock footage. Good work. Yeah, that works. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer a question that I know the the, the answer because some Canon stuff guys I, I I don't know. Storage setup for my Ursa. Um, I don't know. I have my two um, Angelbird CFast. And then I have two exact same drives. So I have one archive one, let's say, and archive two, and one and archive one and archive one backup, and one is the exact copy of the other one. How do you get job offer to work in the production company in the US? Um, which one? Because I worked for a bunch of companies. Black magic in a cube. No, thank you. Do, 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 do. Solo shooter, FX3 is a no-brainer. Yeah, for sure. Again, if you don't care about the look, about the cinema look, yeah, the FX3 is great. Uh, I prefer beyond color signs over red, so realistically. What is your prediction for 2022? Okay, now I'm gonna get into the prediction. Okay, in my opinion, it is extremely hard. I think I can predict more what um, Sony is probably gonna do which is probably very, okay. First of all, it's a very weird time that we're living in. Um, I just sold my Tesla Model 3 for the exact same price. I bought it new in September, 2019. I bought it for $38,500. They gave me $39,000. So doing prediction, we can speculate and do prediction. I have no clue what's going to happen because we're living in a time where, where maybe they're not going to even release anything because if they do, they have to charge twice as much in order to make it work for them. So maybe Blackmagic is not going to announce anything because they have an amazing Ursa Mini 12K for six grand, a great pocket 6K, 6K Pro. Like, really, what? What they can, I mean, I don't know. Okay, what I would love to see is a Ursa Mini Pro 12K with a dual native ISO. I have to be honest, something that I really, um, 
complain about the Ursa, even if I know it's a cinema camera, is that I'm having our time when it's very uh, low light in very low light situation. So if they can give us an Ursa Mini 12K Pro updated with a dual native ISO, that'll be amazing. If they will ever be able to give us ProRes, that would be a dream. Other than that, that's the thing that someone commented on, on the post on YouTube last time on the community tab and said, we don't need more cameras, we need to make films. That's exactly right. Like, literally, if you ask me now, I don't know what can I, what can I, what would I ever want that does more than this camera? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. This, this is just, I love this thing. So, I don't know. Uh... I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, you did a revision. Okay. Yeah. Send me another email. I'll take a look, man. Sorry. We're looking to buy a successor for our FS7. What's your take on the FX9, FXX? The FSX, I did try it. And it still has that look of the A7S3, which to me is a little bit too digital. It's a bit too Sony. I don't know how to describe it. It's a little bit too Sony. But again... If you're not doing any narrative, any crazy um, cinematic commercial kind of stuff, if you do corporate video, for example, interviews, events, Sony is the way to go. I just you're not gonna have the film look that you have with a with a with a Blackmagic camera. Kyle Keller, living in Orlando, would be amazing to meet. We can try, guys, but it's uh, I'm packed until March first, and then I'm flying to Milan. Yes, Daniela, moving to Portugal. Perfect storage device for the 12K. Um, I'll take it. Hold on. Give me a sec. Where is that? Uh, this. I use this. These are the stuff. These are the cards that I use for the, um, for the Ursa Mini Pro. These are Angelbird AV Pro CF, 512 gigabyte, 560 megabytes per second. I bought two for $630, really good deal on, uh, on B&H. And in terms of archive, this is what I use. So I'm gonna talk about these actually in the course because it's there's kind of like a process backup and stuff. There's a reason why I don't use the um, raid the system and, and server whatever and, and why i use this guy one of the reasons traveling but i'm, I'm gonna talk a lot about this but this is basically what i use one and two exact same copy when i finish space from uh archive one i go to archive two archive two backup archive three three and backup and so on so this is pretty much what i do uh and i have to be honest i'm now grading um, a short film that we shot on the ursa 12k and uh, I can tell you that I'm able to edit and grade the footage out of that drive on my MacBook without any issue. Um, I was pretty blown away. Oh, man, you guys are crazy. There's so many questions. <laughs> um, I love you guys. Thank you so much for your love, support for the question. Uh, perfect storage device for a Samsung x Pro, but I have a lot of issue where the cam stops working. No, yeah, you, you need to use this. That's it. You need to use the, the CFast from Angelbird. Nothing else. In Falcon and the Winter Soldier Disney Series Plus, you use the Pocket 6K to match with Panavision 8K. See? Nobody talked about it. They like the camera because they could strip the Pocket 6K to a minimum. Exactly. Uh, Daniele, send me an email. There's, there's a lot. There's, I don't think Portugal is uh, LA, but there, I have a lot of reason to go there. But I'm um, sacco di ragioni per andare lì, quindi dovrei scrivermi una mail che te le spiego. Are you going to start a new company in Portugal? No, I'm going to work for my battery film LLC, American company. There's a lot of tax reason involved and and and, and stuff like that, and so I'm going to work for my for my American company there. Brog as I already answered the question. I think it's a really same sensor of the Pocket 6K. The only downside is, of course, the crop factor. 
Uh, do you want them to add more stuff of hand D for the G G4? Yeah, that's actually that's actually a really good point. If they could put it an eight stops and D, because like two stop, uh, I will do three, six, and eight stops. I think that'll be great for me. My opinion. Uh, that's a very good point to add to. So to improve the Ursa Mini G2, do a native ISO, still the same beautiful S35 sensor. Uh, another ND eight stops maybe and um, and what did I say and the ProRes that'd be great. Uh, 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 do you want uh, how much will you get to record at twelve k with a one terabyte C fast? Um, eight uh, k twelve by one. I think you're getting about hundred and seventeen minutes, something like that. Twelve k, you're probably getting an hour, maybe less, but it depends for the compression. So, uh, depend, cause you can shoot 18 by one or five by one, three by one. So it really, really depends, but I can, I, I can check that. ProRes in the Ursa 12K, I would love that. I have to be honest, I would love that. I'm not using it that much, but it'd be nice if a client asked for it, for sure. Angelbird just released a four terabyte C Express, CF Express price at almost 2k. Expensive and impressive, and something more car manufacturers should do. Wow, pretty impressive actually. Two grand though, man. It's a lot of money. <laughs> People make excuses for not creating. If you cannot get a decent image out of even a pocket 4k, you are the problem. Yeah, I totally agree, Alex. I totally agree. I totally agree. If I had a pocket for K, Hippo Media, I want to invest in Cinema Lens, so will you, will you, will you get Micro Four Third? No, S35 adapter, a speed booster, and then go EF, because you know that you can use them on, on many cameras. Will you recommend getting, oh, will you recommend getting the uh, pocket and external ND, or just go to the 6 k Pro? If you're getting the Pro, you're still gonna need uh, IR filter, so at that point I will get IR and D filters. Who's a DP that inspires you to look up to? Um, I really love Lubetsky, I really love uh, Deacons, of course, those big ones. Small, small one, I'm, I'm not really following anyone. I'm uh, I also try to don't get too influenced by other people, so I don't really follow any 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 DP accounts or any any anything like that, to be honest. Because there's this risk that you that you might gonna start copying someone someone's style. So I just try to to make some cool stuff and, and, and feel with my brain and not follow a trend. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, but for inspiration, I mean. I really like in very independent movie as well. So, for example, uh, Call Me By Your Name, very good inspiration for me. Everything was shot on a Cook S four thirty five mil, just one lens in thirty five millimeter film. That film is amazing. Like that kind of stuff, indie things that people not a lot of people watch. I think it's it's pretty cool. Uh, uh, um, have you considered rehousing your light cars? Yes. But two problems. First, they're super expensive. Second, they be, they're gonna become super heavy and they're not gonna be as nice to bring around for traveling and, and running gun stuff. So good, good point, but 25 grand to house five lenses and, and having a big cinema lens to bring around, uh, not really. I would think about it if I open like a rental house or something, but no, for, for me, that those are fine. Is there any EF anamorphic lens? Yeah, I think you can get those uh, Atlas anamorphic and you can change the mount from PL to EF. I mean, they're pretty expensive, but you can rent them. I, should be, I wish Blackmagic would come out with a pocket model with a mechanical shutter. Why? Just for the colors. What the mechanical shutter has to do with colors though? I have no clue. What is the most F accessories for the Ursa 12K? The viewfinder, guys. When I'm on a shoot and I'm filming with the client and I send signal out to the monitor, then I, I look at the monitor, then I look at the viewfinder, I'm like, 
hold on. Come here and look inside the viewfinder. And everybody that does that, they look into this viewfinder, they're like, holy crap, because it's insane. Like, I use pretty much just the viewfinder. Yeah, it's 1400 bucks, but it's absolutely worth it. So, for sure. Okay, are you guys still hearing me fine? I keep getting messages from YouTube that my stream is too high, but to be honest, um, to be honest, I have a fiber with one gigabyte in down, one gigabyte in up, so I'm not sure why should I go lower. I want you to look me sharp. Okay. Uh, uh, um, what do you think about the image of the G2 against the... I think the biggest difference with the G2 is first is rolling shutter fin at 8K, which on the Ursa 12K doesn't really exist. And uh, the internal ND is a big, big difference. On the G2, there's a quite a bit of a magenta shift at six stops. On the 12K, there is zero shift at all. And um, it's hard to describe. Again, I, I try to do it in, in my YouTube videos, but the, 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 the blacks in this camera, the shadows are so deep and the image is so rich that um, that's, I think, is the biggest difference with the, with the two, G2. Big fan on easy filters. Have you used their diffusion filters? No, not yet. I just used the Tiffin. Broad, broadcast G2 as Super 35. EF mount, yeah, but even the Pocket 6K has the Super 35 EF mount, but the crop is still 1.56. The Ursa 12K G2 has uh, Super 35, but the crop is 1.3, so it's quite a bit of difference. But then, what do you feel about Panasonic S1 for documentaries? Hello from, Rus from Russia. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. For a documentary, I would see something more like the, the EVA, Panasonic EVA, or, or the Varicam, or... The F6, uh, I don't know if I would use, um, maybe as a B cam, yeah, but I will keep, as a main camera, we use something with internal ND. Uh, <laughs> up in cinema, do you want to donate any of your watches to my watch collection? Eh, yeah, man, I can't, I can't, I fought so hard to build that collection, so hard. Matteo, thoughts about 14 stops versus 15 stop, guys, it's just... You cannot see the difference. Like I heard the argument of people, oh no, I'm gonna keep getting the G2 because it's 15 stop, uh, and the Ursa has 14 stops. Guy, uh, Ari Alex has 14 stops. Then what? You're not gonna be able to see the difference. There is no difference in like, and and who knows if Blackmagic used 15 stops for marketing purposes, and then they 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 redid their tests, and and now they declare 14 stops. You know, like Tesla when they said that. It's uh, 300 miles, and the new one that's coming out is 310 miles. Uh, they just redid a calculation. I don't think there's an actual difference in dynamic range. Um, can I be can I be a, a cinematographer, a true cinematographer with a pocket 4K? You can be a cinematographer without any camera. <laughs> Luca Guadagnino is fantastic. Yes, yes, thanks. Um, Okay, that was a cool live. Will this live be available to watch later? Yes, it will. And yes, David, send me an email if you didn't yet at um, Matteo at MatteoBertoli.me. I have uh, probably 50, 60 emails from people from Portugal already. So I cannot wait. I cannot wait to be in Portugal. Okay. Uh, mechanical shutter or oh for photo mode. Oh, okay. Rens wants you down. Yeah, I think is the is the red uh, server. Then he's just got a pocket for K month ago upgrading from Sony. Any tips on learning at ad ad adapting the pocket for K? Uh, to the pocket 4K, yes, you should go back and watch my my videos about the exposure because those are pretty cool. And there's a cool video about false color, which I, I also did again, the follow-up uh, is one of my latest video. Should go watch all those videos that I have back there because there's tons of information. The States lost a good one when you leave. 
Yeah, I'm gonna keep my visa, so it's not gonna be a crazy deal. Um, I mean, if I have work, I'm gonna come back here, but you know, the, if, my rent went up forty uh, percent, something like that. Uh, every time I go out for lunch, dinner is two hundred bucks. The like, cost of living uh, in America, the inflation is getting to a point where I, where I. I don't think I should be here anymore. Like uh, I, I develop a good network of people all around the world and, and I can be whatever in the most advantageous country in terms of cost of living, taxes and everything. So I don't feel uh, America. I mean, I can come back here for work, but everything is getting is getting pretty crazy. Lumix S5. Lumix S5. I think it's okay. The thing with Panasonic to me, it seems like that every single camera they release is pretty much the same. So I'm like, what's the real difference? Except, okay, one does 422 and then one, the other one does 420. Because like, I, I used to have the GH5, and I have to be honest, every time I put it, I mean, I, I watch video shot on the Panasonic or we receive files from people for the last purposes, whatever. They all look the same, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm like, where are they really improving? Like it's, yeah, maybe it's a better low light. Maybe, maybe it's full frame. Maybe it's yes. But in terms of image quality, it just looks, look, they all look pretty much the same to me, which is not a bad thing. Cause I, even the pocket 4k, 6k and Ursa look pretty similar. It's a great thing, but I, I, you know, I don't, I don't see such a difference. Steve, you're such a. Great cinematographer and cool guy. Thank you guys. Thank you. And, uh, and, uh, okay. Um, there's going to be a new short film coming out on the channel. Uh, probably next week is a last of the short film that we did in California back in May, 2021 with Rafi took a while to get it uh, edited. We're still doing sound mix. I'm doing a grade, but it's going to be out on the channel. And, uh, for the people that are already on the sign up for the course, we're gonna break down the um, a bunch of scene there with behind the scene on uh, Sunday lesson, and even probably the one after. But uh, that is something that's gonna come up. And then I've been so busy with moving and everything because like after six years in America, moving back to to Europe is a, is a big jump, and uh, and I'm having a hard time doing. I mean, I'm shooting a couple of commercial in there, but I'm having a hard time putting sit down, relax, and think about a spec ad and shoot it. First of all, because it's extremely hard to source uh, actors and models in Tampa Bay. And the other reason why, because it takes time and money and I'm, and I'm packed because I'm leaving in 25, 24 days. But once I'm going to be back to Portugal, guys, I have a lot of um, investment I want to do in spec ads and short films that uh, I'm going to bring that to the channel with behind the scene content and stuff like that. I have a bunch of masterclass idea I want to do about vintage lens and other stuff. So it's going to be, it's going to be nice. But uh, to recap this session for camera prediction 2022, I think, yes, we, we're going to have new cameras. I hope we might not. That's something that we should keep in mind. We might not have any cameras at all because of the chip shortage, whatever. But let's say there's no chip shortage and Blackmagic is going to deliver his camera. I think, yes. I think even if I'm not too sold on the idea, we might going to have a pocket full frame. Not sure about the cube though, because the, again, the essence of the pocket is that big monitor on the back. So in my opinion, we're going to have pocket, pocket AK with the same sensor of the Ursa, but maybe dual native ISO limited to AK. So full frame pocket AK. And probably a slightly, slightly better version of the 12K if they were able to find out a way to improve with the dual native ISO. Uh, this is for Blackmagic. In terms of Sony, I think they're going to keep pushing out uh, A7S 4 and the FX4, even though I wish uh, they wouldn't just put that sensor in that body, but it would give us something else because that would be pretty amazing to get something decent from Sony. Finally, something that can shoot raw, something that can shoot 422, 444, whatever inside the camera. Uh, red, not a lot of prediction. Panasonic is going to keep pushing those full frame 
mirrorless camera, which I think they're, they're great to be honest for a lot of people love them. To me, they're still a little bit too digital. Canon, it's hard to, to, to see what they're doing. They're releasing a bunch of camera for no reason. Like those R5, C, D, B, like they're kind of all over the place. I'm interested to see what Nikon is going to do because Nikon is having, again, our time bringing people to the video side, but just because people think it's a photography. What I would really love, okay, here I say this probably might not gonna happen, but here what I think, here what I would love. I would love a Leica Q whatever, three, four, with a maybe a tiltable screen that it kind of does what the original pocket used to do. Maybe something that should even H264 or 5, um, 10 bit with the Leica log profile or the Panasonic log profile, whatever. But it'll be cool to have a, an actual cinema camera in this little body right here. Wouldn't be dope to have something. I don't care about ND. I can, I can put them in later, but would it be cool to have a camera with a 28 millimeter Samilax uh, 1.7 that can shoot proper video. I think that will be super dope uh, for Leica to release this, but I'm not sure. This camera shoots video, but with their natural profile, which is not, I kind of want to do a test, probably going to shoot something in Portugal or around here in Florida, but I would be, I love to see a Leica oriented video camera, but not like those as hell, because those are super expensive and the lenses alone, they're like six grand but something compact, like a compact cinema camera that I can bring with me, take photos and, and you know, I shoot some decent video on it. That would be great. Um, this is for Leica and I think Panasonic too, because they, they collaborate. So uh, yeah, and then Ari, Ari should supposedly release a new Ari Mini, Alexa Mini S35. So we see that, but uh, we see. Uh, okay. All right, guys. I think a lot of people are moving on. They're leaving. They're probably going dinner in Europe. Come to Swiss. Chris, I'll definitely will come to Swiss because I want to tour all those uh, uh, watch houses, watch factory. Definitely want to visit a uh, couple of interesting ones. AP, Patek, that'll be nice. Uh, x -Tai. I got a lot of equipment, but no one to shoot with in LA. Do you have any, any networking suggestion? That was my problem in LA too. Uh, I, I was friends with this Italian director, so we were able to kind of work something out and shoot some stuff. But otherwise, I had a really hard time doing uh, doing networking there. Okay, Davide Simonazzi, appena cambiato la mia pocket con una 6K. Qualche idea su qualche lente cine per Super 35? Uh, I will do... I will probably mod the Nikkor AIS. Tokina, Tokina are amazing. Tokina are the only modern lenses that I love. I mean, affordable, uh, kind of affordable because of course there's a remastered prime and everything else, but, but they were asking about the person is one. I met documentaries when I shoot alone. Oh, okay. Like one man band. Yeah. Yeah. No, S one hundred percent as one over Fuji hundred percent as one is great. I don't know about the ports for sound, but I think you should have some option. I would love to experiment a little bit with this camera. Maybe in Portugal, I can find a camera shop that can borrow me uh, some cameras. so I can do some tests and maybe we can collaborate for YouTube. I have trouble grading Fuji F-Log. The shadow is kind of mushy. Do you have any tips? Yeah, that's the thing with, with Fuji. I use the battery lots that we have for F-Log and, and works great. But when you are in tricky lighting situation, um, I don't know. It, yeah, I agree. I, I think there's something off with that F log, which I, I'm not sure what's, what's going on, but it's not, it's a pain. What do you think we get a new BM micro camera? Maybe uh, that'd be good. I think that'd be great. I think that would be a great addition for people that complain about putting a pocket 6k on a gimbal. So at least they have their little cube that they can do whatever and put it on a gimbal, maybe something for a thousand dollar. That'd be great. That match the pocket 6K perfectly. I would love that. <laughs> Name of those Nikkor. Nikkor AIS. You can find them anywhere. Nikkor AIS. 
I did ask earlier. Uh, sorry, guys. I had to skip. I skipped a bunch of questions because there were so many, and I had to. I wanted to catch up to see if I if I was still connected. Um, what diffusion fabrics would you recommend for a four by four frame? Look at unbleached muslin, magic claw. Yeah, the muslin should be fine. I love it. I think muslin would be cool. Yeah, I think whatever it is in the aperture 300D, they're also really good. But uh, I use the muslin uh, a lot on a feature film. That was that was great. Tokina 2870 f 2.6 2.8 is one of the best zoom lens under 500 pound. Yes, I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay, guys. So I think uh, I think yeah, mainly people are interested in uh, into to know my opinion about that cube full frame that you guys want, which I don't. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what Black Magic. Uh, they're gonna have to release something though. I I still concerned they might have problem with with chips and stuff because I. Uh, I don't know. It's gonna be tricky. But um, uh, what are your feelings about these Yofin pictures? Uh, I used the twenty, the first one, the twenty to to, to fifty something like that, and I liked it. I, I used it very briefly. The problem that I had with the lens, the closest focus was a little bit too close. The minimum focus was very close. Sorry, it was not close enough for my for my workflow. So I was having a hard time focusing on, on close subject. So I don't know. I don't know. But other than that, I mean, they're, they're pretty good, you know. Uh, they're definitely a really good option. Okay, guys, I'm going to close this live here, right here. I want to leave it pretty short so people can rewatch it and have fun. One hour and 21 minutes of me talking. But... Uh, Thank you so much for this live. You were guys so many. Every time I connect, I'm like, maybe I'm not going to have any question. And then it's like, I had like 300 questions here. So thank you so much. Um, again, if you want to sign up for the online course, next lesson is on Sunday. If you didn't make it to the first one, you can still watch it because now I upload it on Podia. It's a two hour and 30 minutes of, uh, we talk about business mainly. So networking, how to find clients, how to retain clients, how to make them happy, portfolio, website, how to get more jobs. And, uh, and, and I also told a couple of stories about my, the time where I almost gave up filmmaking. That was pretty, pretty moving story, uh, pretty sad. But uh, yeah, man, if you wanna um, learn about my process, about everything, yeah, I have this online course. You're gonna find the link in the description of the live. And, um, and yes, yes, uh, no, I never use the contact size, never, never use them, but because I have this, now I have the 15 Leica Super Elmerate F4, 19 uh, V1 2.8, uh, 28 Elmerate 2.8, 35 F2, 50 F2, 60 f 2.8 the macro which is coming in a few days and the 90 so i have uh, I, I have 7 7 15 19 28 35 50 69 seven amazing light car lenses that i'm using so i'm not i'm not having um i'm just with these lenses i'm not gonna do anything else you know okay uh i think you should try Leica sl2 I actually, sh I actually saw a video about the SL2 and I don't know if the people that shot that um, screw it up, but it was really clipping the highlights. So my question with Leica is, is how do they, I don't know. I have a hard time understanding what if, what's their, their, gamma their dynamic range when it comes to video because in photo you can do a bunch of stuff but for video from what the clip for the from the clip I, sh I i saw it was it looked very dslr ish with the super um blow up highlights so I, I might have to test it out but i'll be i would love to test it out man like if, if you are in europe somewhere hit me up and we can hang out and and, and check that out Okay, guys, going to hand the stream here. Thank you so much for being connected tonight or this afternoon in the U.S. And I'll see you the next one. Get ready for the new short film coming up. And yes, if you have any questions, drop me an email. 
all of you guys, thanks for the support. Thanks for all the amazing question. Thank you, thank you. And I'll see you the next one. I'm gonna do this live pretty often, I think, even in Portugal. Bye guys. Thank you, thank you.